Hello all, and welcome to another techniques video. This is Emmanuel Rivera speaking, and today I'm going to be telling you about the technique of immunohistochemistry. Let's start by talking a little bit about the meaning of the word immunohistochemistry. This is a word composed by three other words, immuno, histo, and chemistry. Immuno refers to the immunological reaction that takes place in the process between a target protein and an antibody. Histo refers to the fact that the process will utilize a specific tissue where we want to identify a protein of interest. And chemistry refers to the fact that different molecules are utilizing the technique, such as for example, fluorescent tags. This technique is a direct method for identifying the cellular and subcellular distribution of a target protein. It has multiple applications, ranging from basic research to medical applications. It can allow us to understand the morphology of a tissue or specific cells within a tissue, or allow us to identify the localization of a protein within that tissue. It can also be utilized in the detection and prognosis of cancer. It can allow us to study tumors of uncertain origin. It can also be used in the detection of infections by different pathogens, like for example, viruses. So, how does immunohistochemistry work? First, the tissue of interest is isolated and treated with antibodies. A primary antibody will recognize a specific region of the target protein known as the epitope, allowing for the antibody to bind the protein. Ideally, this primary antibody should bind specifically to the target protein and nothing else. But then, how do we visualize our protein of interest? For this purpose, we have tagged antibodies, antibodies that are labeled, for example, with a fluorophore, such as a green fluorescent protein or GFP. In the direct approach of immunohistochemistry, the primary antibody itself will be carrying the fluorophore. In the indirect method of immunohistochemistry, the primary antibody will bind the protein of interest and then a secondary antibody will bind the primary one. The secondary antibody will carry a tag, let's say GFP, and this will allow us to identify the protein of interest. Visualization of the target proteins labeled with the fluorescent tag antibody is achieved by means of microscopy. To talk about the application of the immunohistochemistry technique, I would like to show you one of my own experiments. In this experiment, I was trying to identify the localization of cells within the brain of Drosophila melanogaster flies that express a specific protein, which I'm going to be referring to as protein B. To do this, I first dissected the fly brain using forceps and we can see how that looks on the top corner on the right. After dissecting the fly brain, I treated it with a series of antibodies. First, I'm incubating the brain with a primary antibody that labels a protein present in all cells of the brain. And this primary antibody is targeted by a secondary antibody carrying a tag, a red fluorescent protein. By using this combination of antibodies, I can get a good visualization of the whole morphology of the brain. Simultaneously, I'm incubating the brain with another primary antibody that will target specifically my protein of interest, protein B. This primary antibody will be bound by a secondary antibody carrying a green fluorescent protein, GFP. So, the cells that we observe in the image in green are cells that express the protein of interest, protein B. Now that we have created an atlas of the different brain regions by labeling against protein A with the red fluorophore, 
and that we have also labeled the cells expressing the protein of interest, protein B, by using the green fluorophore, we can merge these two images, getting a very accurate image showing the specific localization of cells that express protein B throughout the fly brain. A common issue researchers find when using antibodies is nonspecific staining. This happens when the primary antibody binds to non-target proteins, not to the protein of interest. So how can we control for this? In order to discard the possibility of nonspecific staining, one could disrupt the expression of the target protein by use of different genetic tools such as introduction of genetic mutations. So in this example, let's say we're knocking out protein B by means of a genetic mutation. After knocking out protein B, one can incubate with anti-protein B primary antibody and the green tag secondary antibody and ask the following question, do we still see a signal? If we do not see a signal after knocking out protein B, it means our primary antibody is labeling specifically against protein B. If we still see a signal after knocking out protein B, it means our antibody is labeling other proteins aside or protein of interest. And so this means that we need a different antibody. In summary, Immunohistochemistry is a direct method for identifying the cellular and subcellular distribution of a target protein. It utilizes a combination of primary and secondary antibodies as well as microscopy detection. And this is a technique with a wide array of different applications, like for example, protein localization and understanding of the morphology of a specific tissue, as well as a wide array of different clinical applications.